Hey friends, welcome back. I hope you're doing well. Today we are decorating my entire farm in Fields of Mystria, a brand new farming game that has very quickly become my newest obsession. During my 100 days playthrough, I completed mostly everything I set out to do except for decorating my farm, which for me was one of the things I was looking forward to the most since I am absolutely in love with the game's cute aesthetics. So while Mysteria is still in early access, I wanted to challenge myself to see how far I could take decorating my space with everything we currently have available, and I am taking y'all with me through the entire process. I decided to kick things off on Summer 1 of year two so that I could start with a fresh new season and new crops. So I started out by clearing up all the weeds and debris on my farm and laying out my new garden plots. I was experimenting with this diamond plot last season and I really liked it but realized I originally made a mistake and it's one tile off and not completely centered so I fixed that before moving on. I really love how in Mysteria you can create a lot of different shapes for your garden plots so I focused on making some various points of interest with this feature and scattering different crops and flowers around my farm for pops of color. I will say it isn't the most efficient way to water your crops unless you use a spell, of course, but it looks really cute and makes me happy, so a win is a win. During my 100 days playthrough and beyond, I was breeding a ton of animals for all the different color variants, and I realized some of my coop and barn areas were getting a little too crowded, and I want my babies to have enough space to roam around and graze, so I decided to start expanding into the empty spaces on my farm. I cleared an area down near the river to move my cow barn to for now, which I thought looked nice and peaceful. The next day, I got to crafting some bigger decor items like picnic tables and lawn chairs I wanted to fit into empty spaces between my farm plots and barns, just so I could start to lay everything out and get a better idea of what decor will fit where. I cleared more farm area and decided I wanted to play around with pathing a little bit more to create a long orchard area for my trees. Loved how these little tufts of grass looked in the middle so I went with that and then I decided to start growing crops so I can see how all the colors and flowers look together in case I want to change anything later on so I got a bunch of seeds and planted and watered them for the rest of the evening. My poor little farmer is being worked until she literally faints every day but don't worry girl it'll be worth it it'll be worth it it'll come together soon. I ran out of time to place down my fruit trees but I did that the following morning so you can kind of see how I want the trees to sit in the middle of the path like so. Unfortunately, I can only buy the trees for summer right now, but in the future seasons, I will keep adding to this area so there will be a whole line of cute trees running down my farm. I also had a couple of animals left to send to daycare so I can focus just on decorating and moving their coops around. So I sent them over to boyfriend Hayden and got to work on organizing their areas a bit more. Now, back to my crops, I was fiddling around with some more cute garden plot shapes and liked this little heart area I made with a well in the center, but I ultimately decided to move it closer to Dragon Boyfriend's statue to make a cute little garden area for him to look at. Because, you know, he deserves it. He grants me magic and stuff, which is iconic. And I sort of want to prepare for when his portrait comes because I know he is going to have a lethal face card. So, you know, I want to have a good relationship and stuff. I ended up replacing the heart area with a big farm plot like the one above it, but instead I made it with even more hearts, which I thought turned out really cute. If you didn't know, you can zoom out your camera in game so you can get a better look at how everything flows together, which was super helpful for me to see where my fencing needed to go and just how much space all of my garden plots were taking up to see how much more area I had to work with. With everything I was crafting and all the crops I was growing, I really needed more storage, so I started on a mini area for all of my chests outside my house. I saw some people on TikTok mark their chests with these crop signs, which I thought was a cute idea. So I did that as well to add some color to the area and help me find what I am looking for more easily. In between my decorating days, I didn't show all of this, but I spent a lot of time going through town to chop down trees and break rocks for materials I need. I was also looking for the last few bugs and artifacts for the museum to unlock even more furniture, doing my daily chores and checking the stock at the Saturday market and Baylor's cart 
to get anything else I might want to use to spruce up the farm. Moving back to the right side of the farm, now that I am done with Caldaris's garden, I wanted to work on this little picnic area I started for Dragon Boyfriend and update it to reflect his personality a little better. I went with a lot more stone options like this chess table and priestess statue, the mystery a history book, and placed down a more elegant picnic area. At this point, all of my crops had grown in fully, and I realized I actually didn't like how the catmint looked alternating with the sunflowers in my garden patches. So I decided to just keep it simple and change it all to sunflowers for this season. I have also gathered the majority of the decor pieces I wanted to unlock from the museum. So I started on decorating the inside of my house as well and sort of centered it around the bug collection and the artifact collection, which are both so stunning. I wanted the inside to feel magical and whimsical with a bit of like a rustic touch at the same time. So I am mixing and matching those key pieces with some pieces from the cabin and cottage sets as well. Unfortunately, it looks like the lovely cottage table is glitched, so I can't put anything on it, but myself and some other players have reported it to the Mysteria team, so I hope this gets fixed in the new patch. Now we are in the final stretch, fam. So here is a little montage of me adding the last few touches to the farm. I I place down some smaller garden patches for my animals. Pro tip is to fill them with crops that yield multiple harvests so your animals will eat them and then you'll get a steady influx of shiny beads for the chicken statue. But I decided to just use flowers here so they would look cuter for the video. My brain clearly works in a very scattered way. I swear I have ADD. So you'll see that as the days went on, I kept adding more and more to each area to fill up little picnic or sitting areas with pretty flower pots, food decor, lanterns, candles and just lots of little things to fill in all the nooks and crannies. Some of these decor pieces literally look like fire hazards, but don't worry, your farm actually can't catch fire in Mysteria, thank God. But we finished that up and now we are on to the full tour. So we start out in my house, which I am super happy with how it turned out. I love these furniture sets and can't wait for them to add more in later so I can make this space even more cozy and magical. I saw a sneak peek at the Witch Queen decor set on Instagram a while back and I think the cauldron and crystals from that set would go perfectly in this space. So that's kind of why I have a little blank area at the bottom here and also I'm waiting for the house upgrade so I can move these chests into a different room to keep it nice and tidy. Moving outside here are my big crop fields that my little farmer worked tirelessly on. I have everything grown in just for y'all so you can see how the taller crops kind of grow through and it feels like I'm walking through a maze and it's super cute and magical. I finally brought all of my animals back home now that I am done decorating for the time being and I hope they love their new space. We got some little sitting areas, some toys for them, which honestly I should buy a couple more of, and some cute blankets and picnic areas for them to sit on. And then finally, here is my chicken coop with some more flowers and picnic spots. And then moving on to my pretty extensive collection of chests, which are so useful, but I feel like even these are gonna fill up really quickly. There's seriously like so many collectibles, even right now, but also more coming to Fields of Mysteria. Now we're walking over to the space that I have set aside for the rest of my trees in the orchard. I also have a little camping area here with another picnic spot. Honestly, hope they add in more furniture other than picnic sets because while they are super cute, it's honestly really repetitive and I want just a little bit more. Then we have Caldaris's garden and his shrine with, of course, some activities for him because dragon statues have hobbies too, you know? And then here is what the farm looks like at night with all of the lanterns and candles turned on, and there you have it. This is my early access mystery farm, and I am super happy with how it turned out. The Q4 update is right around the corner, and we are going to be checking it out and decorating more of my farm live on Twitch and TikTok. So feel free to follow me over there if you want to hang out and yap about all things Fields of Mysteria. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Goodbye! Thank you.